Welcome back to this Grade Academy lecture on Atomic Structure Lesson 2, where we're going to learn about the nucleus and the contents of the nucleus inside an atom. Now, we know that uh, a lot about the um, atomic structure from the history table, which we were dealing with the last day. And we were particularly interested in knowing about the famous work, the gold foil experiment that Ernest Rutherford did. And what he's famous for is the idea of the nucleus and also of the proton. Now, we leave the proton for a second, but what he did, as you remember, I'm sure you look up last lesson, you know that the alpha particles were shot, literally, at a thin foil gold um foil and then the measurement was taken on the far side. Now when he did that he discovered that most went straight through, most of the alpha particles went straight through. A few were deflected at quite significant angles and some, very few, were actually sent, repelled back. They were repelled back. Now what he concluded was that the atom had a dense central structure and that was positively charged. Now, so that's where we're at. We quite know quite a bit about that. Now, that's 19, 12, 13. Titanic is sinking and all of that. So it's at that time. And there is another uh, player here that we have to also know about. So, of, of course, radioactivity is, is the new toy. <clears throat> and there is a man called Henry Mosley, and he's very significant because what he does is he uses, okay, he actually uses X-rays, X-rays, and he fires them at different kinds of atoms, elements, hydrogen, he fires them at. He discovers that, here he is, Henry Mosley, he is famous for having discovered the atomic number. Now, I haven't mentioned what the atomic number is yet. You would know it from junior cert, but I'm assuming nothing. And he devises a method of counting the number of positive charges. Now, he does not discover protons. No, that's what Ernest Rutherford also discovers. But he does know that each positive charge represents something in the nucleus and what is later they're later called protons and the nucleus of an atom so what did he do he measured the number of positive charges that's what he did he measured the number of positive charges in atoms using x-rays that's what he used and that's what he found and he found that the number of positive charges uh, was different for every element in other words, every single different kind of atom had a unique one. So all the hydrogens had one, a positive charge of one. Helium always had a positive charge of two. Regardless of anything else, they were constant. They were like a steady eddy. Now, the other thing that's written here is he confirmed Mendeleev's positions of some positioning of some elements in the periodic table. We will deal with that in the lesson on the periodic table. So he is famous for the atomic number. And when I go back into the slideshow, you'll see a periodic table and I will remind you of that in a second. Now, so Henry Moseley now starts and is discovered. Unfortunately, he went off to uh, fight for king and country in World War I and he died in Gallipoli. So that uh, was the end of his um, contribution to the atomic structure. Um, but what he did do was he basically devised a method using X-rays of finding the amount of positive charges, which we now know as protons. The other person I want to talk about just now is James Chadwick. Now, it's not written very big. It's not uh, significantly uh, large. There's no picture associated with it. But he is famous for having discovered the neutrons. Now, right down in the Cavendish laboratory. He's working away with Ernest Rutherford and all the other co-workers. And they've discovered that there's lots of pluses in the nucleus, lots of protons in a nucleus. And he's of the opinion, well, how could all these pluses stay together? And if they all have a value of one atomic mass, how could they not just repel each other? Because like repels, as we all know. So he concluded, or he assumed that there must be something in there that had a mass similar to the protons, but they were 
neutral, which was why it was so very, very difficult to find them. And these things were only found, oh, well over 10, 15 years after all of these famous gold foil experiments were covered, um, discovered. So he caused, so he kept blasting, he bombarded atoms, nucleus, he tried to blast them until he could chip out one. It's a bit like in a snooker, um, in a uh, pool table or something, or a snooker, where you have all the red balls in a triangle. And then you fire the white ball at them with the snooker cue. And eventually one of them, well, maybe if you do it really well, you can chip them all out, but it's chipping out one. And this is what he did. He caused the release of these neutral particles in with same mass as protons, and he called them neutrons. Now, how did he do this? He bombarded beryllium with alpha particles. And that's how my pupils remember it. He bombarded beryllium with alpha particles. Now he's bowing out. So the significant things, what do we actually know? I'm going to pass, pass this. This number here in the periodic table, this actual number is the atomic number. It's what I call the PEP number. The atomic number tells you the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. So every nitrogen atom you will ever meet will have an atomic number of seven, which means that it has seven protons in the nucleus. Now, when I go back to this table, now when I go to this table, we now know quite a bit. We know that atoms have three types of subatomic particles, in other words, within them. Electrons, which I haven't talked very much about at all, neutrons and protons and we have to down here on this side we have the protons have a positive charge a relative in comparison with something else Co relative means in comparison or in average right positive they have a mass atomic unit mass in other words imagine that they have a little weight of one atomic mass unit but it's not one gram now but it can be considered like that. It's not, it's got a mass. Where do you find them in the nucleus? Now move me out of the way for a second. Um, where do you find them in the nucleus? And who discovered them? Ernest Rutherford. The next one is neutrons. They're n -n -n neutral. And they also have an atomic mass of one. Where do you find them? You also find them in the nucleus. James Chadwick actually recognizes these and he eventually finds them in round about 1928. The electrons though, which I haven't spent any time doing because practically all of the chemistry courses about chemistry, about the electrons and what they're going to do. So we will deal with them in great detail in the next lesson. But the electrons, they're negative, n -n -n negative. And where do you find them? Your weight, their mass, sorry, is not significant. And where do you find them? You find them orbiting. You find them in energy levels orbiting the nucleus. They're not in the nucleus. And you must remember that it was J.J. Thompson that discovered them, not William Crookes, as some people constantly make that mistake. Okay, so this is a little timeline here, and I just want you to have an idea of where we're going with this. So we have the Greek philosophers, Empedocles, and they're using the term atom. And they're saying it cannot be split up any further. That's fine. 40, 400 BC. And then you go for 1808. 1800's a big uh, watershed in chemistry terms because Volta has just made the battery. And so Dalton climbs up and you've discover more when we do the history of the periodic table, climbs up and he says, atoms are invisible, indestructible, and they are the smallest structures. And remember, when they combine, they combine in fixed whole number ratios like H2O. That was the first lesson. Johnston Stoney, we're very proud of because he is Irish and he proposes the name for these unusual negative charges. He says, let's call them the Greek electron. And that's fine. So I don't have him on a timeline. He hasn't discovered electrons, but he's sitting there. Now come along to 
1897. And dates are not required and neither are the faces, by the way. You don't have to remember what they look like. The picture might appear in an exam paper, but it's the English that's written beside them, the words that are written beside them that will actually give you the information. So what have I drawn here? I've drawn J.J. Thompson, and here is his first atomic structure, his model. He makes what is known as the plum pudding. Now, what you can do is you can put a little minus there, a minus there, and minus there. And that black structure, the big sphere, represents the atom, and it's positive, and these negative plums embedded in it. And of course, it's only a matter of time, very shortly afterwards, with the advent of using radioactivity, that Ernest Rutherford and his co-workers discover that the atom doesn't look like a plum pudding structure. It looks more like a hollow sphere with a very dense nucleus. And then you come to 1922, and I've not mentioned Niels Bohr, but he is now starting to look at the electrons and what they're up to. That will be the next lesson. But I did tell you about James Chadwick, and now I'm just looking, I'm sort of enlarging that so you can see the nucleus. The electrons are not relevant here in this picture, but he now finds that some particles inside the atoms are neutral, and he calls them neutrons. And that is why I call him Jimmy Neutron. But James Chadwick, how did he do that? And the phrase is, he bombarded beryllium with alpha particles. So you know already about John Dalton, you know about Johnston Stoney, and you also know about JJ Thompson. And today's lesson was about Ernest Rutherford and James Chadwick. Well, there's somebody missing here. The person I'm talking about that's missing is Henry Mosley. And he, at this time, 1912, 1911, 1912, was using x-rays. And he found that inside the atom, be it that shape or that shape, he found that every atom had a unique number of positive charges, which Ernest Rutherford eventually calls protons, but Henry Moseley actually discovers that hydrogens have one, lithiums have three, and so on and so forth. So thank you for watching this great academy lecture. Until next time, happy learning.